Also false goddess gods and goddesses on the decks. Well, um to uh the beginning of October, I'm going to start my the holiday that God taught me. Well, uh, the holiday month, it's a month holiday, it's called God O Ween. And God O Ween is about teaching people about the a fear of the Lord to reverence and respect God pretty much is what the idea of fearing the Lord is all about. You know what I'm saying? That re is supposed to be more likely a reminder of what we are supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? If we truly going to have a relationship with the Lord, we will have to fear him. It's what the scriptures put out you know, loud and clear, pretty much that I'm going to show you about the importance of fearing God, fearing the Lord and reverencing and respecting him and all the things that he has done and has established is what is very important to do if you want to have a genuine relationship with him. Oh, but so the topic of this message, well, Here's the interesting um of uh, uh, the feast of tabernacles, um the Sunday the thirtieth will the day the it will be the end of Sukkot the holiday but it, it's another hol different two different holidays in front of that but the uh but uh, the the one on the thirtieth. Um, that is called that that day is the ideal of the final day of judgment of divine judgment. That's what the day is called the final day of judgment. Hmm, wonder what that means. Well, if you know how God does things, you should know. But the holiday uh, is the seventh day, the seventh day of Sukkah. Feast of Tabernacles is the day of final day of divine judgment. And the next day is the, I don't know, Shav, Shaz or something. <laughs> and then the next day is the Su Simcha, Simcha Torah, something like that. So it's kind of like uh, eight days. I mean, it's, it's another holiday, two holidays within that holiday that when the fulfillment of what God's divine plan made can happen at that period of time but the topic of this message oh very important that God has showed me last night and revealed to me about the reality of wrong riches or right riches and wrong riches yes we need to understand this idea of right riches and wrong riches. Now, the ideal of rich means to have great abundance. Now, you can riches doesn't mean money. It not just money, but it talks about anything. You can be rich with uh wisdom, you can be rich with foolishness unfortunately. <laughs> a bunch of foolishness, a bunch of rich uh, uh wisdom. Uh, you, you can have a great abundance of something. Pretty much is what riches is all about. But the ideal of riches that we need to understand as Christians is not the ideal of what you may think it is concerning that you associate the ideal word riches with money. Um, but I'm going to show you in the word of God of what how we supposed to really define riches. Now it says in Philippians of uh, four Sabbath four nineteen that but my God shall supply all your needs according to his that's what that's the word you got to get his riches in glory by Christ Jesus um his riches now, and we think his riches is like oh money and uh this and that but read uh, Ephesians 3 and 16. It says that ye would grant you 
according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Let me read that again. That you will be grant that he will grant you according to his riches to be strengthened with might in his spirit in the inner man is what uh, Paul talks about the ideal strength in that aspect that God's really true riches is about strengthening your spirit man the inner man inside of you that you will operate not by power not by might but by the spirit you know what I'm saying and God will bring provision his provision based upon the things that you need on earth you know the provision that you need uh, the provision and protection re really, re really what this holiday of Feast of Tabernacles is all about, reminding us about the provision and the protection that God has given us, God has given his people, is the celebration of what that ideal aspect is all about. But the thing is, what we're supposed to be viewing the riches of the glow of his glory is based upon to be strengthened in might in our spirit not so much about now i'm not saying that he's not you know, can't bless you with no money i'm just saying that the that the agenda the main agenda if god is going to bless you with riches is supposed to be about the riches of his strength you know what i'm saying his strength you know, strengthen our spirit, man, that our spirit, man, can perform the things of God, that perform the miracles, can perform the signs and wonders. You know what I'm saying? Attack the kingdom of darkness. You know what I'm saying? Is what really that the the true the the true riches that as us as Christians are supposed to be, you know, requesting and really truly aiming to have those riches, but Unfortunately, you know, the religious system or this church system has most people, majority people thinking rich is based upon, you know, money, you know, and uh, the wealth is there is more of the agenda of seeking out riches than it is about seeking after the riches of to be strengthened in your spirit, inner man, you know what I'm saying? And the spirit inner man is very important than these temporal uh, riches that is here today, going tomorrow. Now, here's what's interesting about, uh, it says in Matthew 13, 22, that it talks about the seed, the, the, the parable of the sower, that we must understand concerning the ideal aspect of the riches of this world system, of this you know, money and uh, clothes and material things or whatever um, that we need to understand about these riches of pretty much the wrong riches. When you read this, it says in Matthew 13, 22, it says he also received the seed, you know, among the thorns is he that heareth the, heareth the word and <clears throat> And the deceitfulness and the deceitfulness of the riches chokes the word. The deceitful of the wickedness chokes the word and becometh unfruitful. Oh, the deceitful of the this world ideal of money and uh, wealth can uh, choke the word of God concerning the seed that we receive the word of God if we're not careful concerning of how we put things in a proper perspective concerning the riches of this world concerning the world and the riches in heaven that that is about strength and giving making us strong spiritually it should be the agenda of how we be about you know uh, seeking riches to be abundance in the strength of God to truly be about establishing a relationship with God and doing the things of God of saving souls, changing lives, 
you know what I'm saying, so giving out lost souls for the kingdom of God should be something important that requires the riches of the, you know, the strength of the spirit. But these riches of this earth is, you know, unfortunately that this church system uh, has allowed itself to be empowered by the flow of the riches of money that it can't really do the great work that the miracles and signs and wonders that it should do because it's trying to be about obtaining the ideal wrong riches of money and wealth and in the standard of this world system is what has been unfortunately preached by too many ministers and preachers about trying to obtain wealth in this world system that is here today going tomorrow and you ain't going to take it with you you're not going to fit it in the eye of the needle that's what Jesus said and it's sad that you know Christians are not being about uh, trying to get the richness of the strengthening of the inner man to really be about operating by the spirit of God and the power of God of the miracles and signs and wonders that can give money and all that kind of stuff but um, you know it's sad that it's so much this church religious system is about so much of the money aspect first and it is about obtaining the strength in the spirit man because when you get abundance concerning the spirit man it will be about the truth you know what i'm saying god is spirit and they shall worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and as I, you know, talk about the spirit, the spirit is about something that is about unit. It's supposed to bring unity as what it says in Ephesians 4. It talks about the unity of the spirit that, you know, if we are operate in the spirit, are we walking in the spirit? The performance of unity uh, the, uh, in the spirit and to fight against the flesh, of course, you know, Galatians uh, five that you know we are supposed to be on that agenda of that aspect concerning our relationship with God more than it is obtaining temporal wealth as what Jesus gave the example about temporal wealth in uh, Matthew 6 about you know uh, it can get rust it can get moth on it it can you know the thief can steal it you know what I'm saying but to be about the riches in heaven is about a moth can't get on it, mold can't get on it, uh, nobody can't steal it. You know what I'm saying? It's what giving us a hint of the kind of riches that we should be all about uh, receiving riches from heaven concerning strength in our spirit, that we will grow strong in the spirit of God, that we will be about fulfilling the will of God concerning you know what Jesus has showed us uh, how to fulfill the will of God that decrease of ourselves and increase of the spirit of God it should be the agenda of every Christian it shouldn't be so much about the money factor you know not saying that is not supposed to be about money unfortunately it is but the thing is it shouldn't be all about it you know what I'm saying I mean so much for it that the ideal of this church system is operated that it takes money to do this and it takes money to do that when we need to be about uh operating in something that is about strengthening our spirits more importantly that we can do and fulfill the will of god that is supposed to be bringing the kingdom down thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and to love our enemies bless those that curse us Pray for them to spitefully use you, to have the joy of the Lord to be our strength. You know, saying that in the peace that passes understanding is what the Spirit is all about operating in to, to give us strength to accomplish those things. Should be important, but as it says in Matthew 13, 22, that the deceitfulness of the riches will choke the word of God. That is, will hinder us to be about that abundance as what it talks about, giving God 100, being 100 towards God. And not, you know, 60-fold or 30-fold. But we're supposed to aim to be about giving 100 to God. It's what we need to understand concerning the 
real right riches and wrong riches. All right, that's the message, and I hope it makes sense to you. Hope you got it. To God be glory, him for the miracle in Jesus' name.